Daniel Dubas is going to meet with reporters later this morning in Cranberry. It's standard stuff. Anybody who's running hockey ops does that sort of thing in advance for the NHL draft. And that, of course, is coming in the middle of next week in Nashville. No big deal. What I'd really like to hear from him... It's be a whole lot more interesting than what's actually going to come of it. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. I'd love to see Jason Zucker stay in Pittsburgh. And as of about a month or two ago, That was not exactly a revolutionary opinion, you know? That was something that you could have gotten 100% of people who follow this team to agree upon. But, you know, out of sight, out of mind, other things kind of rise to the top. And even after the management change, even after... Gary Bettman goes public in saying that the salary cap yet again won't be increased because of his stubborn refusal to allow anything to take priority over escrow. Don't get me started on that. For one, it's a really, really boring subject. For another, it would take me forever. And then to kind of look around at the NHL's pending free agency pool, it's easy to see that someone like Zucker might make significant money. And by that, I don't mean in Pittsburgh, where there isn't all that much money to be spending. I saw one projection. There are a lot of websites now that do this, really, really get into details of contracts, not only existing contracts, past contracts, but even looking ahead at what a certain player might get. And the projection on Zucker that I found showed that he'd be getting around a $4.5 million average annual value on a cap hit. Now, that, of course, would be a little bit of a reduction from the money that he just made. And I don't know if the formula in this projection accounts for the market. Because as we all know, in any marketplace, in any walk of life, all it takes is one One transaction to set the actual price. One team would have to step up and pay more. I have a very difficult time believing that after the kind of season that Zucker had in Pittsburgh, not just all the stuff that we would praise him for endlessly. He was the the fire guy. He was the energy guy. He was, what was it that Mike Sullivan would say about him all the time? Oh, he was the one who would drag us. Into the fight. Remember that? He heard it a few times. But he also scored a lot. And he set up a lot. He created a lot of offense that didn't result in points. He did it off the rush. He did it off the forecheck. And through all of that, he was a responsible defensive player. I wouldn't call him a spectacular defensive player, but he most certainly was aware of what he was supposed to be doing and gave it his best effort, as he does with everything. Add to that the breakneck speed that he's got and the age 30 thing doesn't seem to be all that important. Injuries? Yeah, always a concern with him, but he just kept playing. You couldn't keep him out of the lineup even when you were sure that you saw him go down with something that looked like it was an easy four to six weeks. He'd be back in the third period. So my thought when watching him over the course of this past season was that a strong case could have been made that he was the team's MVP with all due respect to Sid. He was the one who was Well, dragging them into the fight, even more so than the captain. And in that context, he felt indispensable. He felt like just the ultimate no-brainer to do everything that you can to bring him back. And yeah, I know, you can look at the Penguins' current cap space. It's around $20 million, and it can have kind of a deceiving 
appearance to it because a lot of that money is going to have to go into goaltending and it's going to have to go into very, very, very good goaltending that's far better than what they had this past season. I don't see how they can pull that off without spending a lot, whether that's through free agency or far more likely through a trade. So my inclination since the season, and I've moved closer and closer in this direction toward this resolution, is to give Drew O'Connor a real chance on one of those top two lines. And when I say that, of course, I'm referring to the Evgeny Malkin line. Would O'Connor fit with Gino? No idea. It'll come with challenges for sure. Would he fit with Gino the way Zucker did? Absolutely unequivocally not. And then I kind of hesitate and go back and rethink the whole thing. Here's another way of looking at it, although this won't help you much either. If you lose Zucker and you value the top six that the Penguins had last season and you presume that whatever it was that afflicted Brian Rust will magically go away this coming season, then you wouldn't want to get away from what was the legitimate strength of your roster. And you'd make an attempt to keep Zucker. And you might even argue to yourself, listen, if we just paid him what he got last season or a little bit more than that, he genuinely seemed happy in Pittsburgh. He genuinely seemed to want to stay with the Penguins. And I know for a fact he's really, really loyal to the people in this room who were surrounding him. My goodness, probably to a fault. Then maybe you can justify it. Based on that the cap will go up someday, maybe Gary won't be the commissioner. I don't know. I don't like to do this. I don't like to start an episode that poses some kind of question and then not come back with some sort of uh, definitive hard stance or hot take or whatever. But I don't have an answer here. I really don't. And I would not want to be Dubas trying to figure this out. But if there's one facet of this that I can take a definitive position on, it would be this. Talk to him. Talk to Zucker. Talk to his agents. Talk to his family if necessary. Find out. See where they're willing to go, not go. See what their parameters are. At least have that knowledge. Figure that out. Don't just let him drift into the marketplace and hope that he comes back to you because there's a really, really good chance that he won't. When we come back, J1Q. Today's J1Q comes from Tony who says, DK, all the talk about Connor Hellebuck and UC Soros I get a little concerned about age, salary cap hit, draft capital that's used to get one of them. There's also going to be stiff competition for their services. What do you think about going after Carter Hart? Younger, cheaper goaltending option with maybe some upside? I'm not a I'm not a Carter Hart guy, Tony, and I haven't been from the beginning including when he's gotten hot. There aren't a lot of things that you can say about Hextall's tenures, plural, on either end of the Commonwealth. But one of the things that he definitely got right when he was in Philadelphia was warding off all the people that were pleading with him to bring Hart up from the minor leagues when the Flyers were so desperate for goaltending. Although that doesn't exactly narrow it down to even a generation <laughs> Does it from a time standpoint? They haven't had a Coley forever, probably since Hextall. But Hart, he came up and he showed what it is that you're describing the upside. He was always supposed to be the elite goaltending prospect. And he comes up and he faltered, and then the Flyers weren't very good in front of him, and he didn't necessarily handle 
giving up five, six goals a night very well, and it affected him, started having that shell-shocked look that some young goaltenders have, and probably should have been sent back. Instead, he just kept getting shoved out there night after night after night. For anybody who pays attention to the Flyers, uh, even if you really, really hate them, that was tough to watch. That was tough to watch a, a kid like that just getting thrown to the wolves every night and nothing could change any head coach's mind about that. So I don't know if he isn't just broken. I don't mean to be uh, insensitive about it, but I look at him now the way I would at, let's say, Jimmy Howard in Detroit a couple of years ago. And you know what I'm talking about. Howard had all the talent in the world, but the Red Wings just ruined him. The Red Wings probably had him seeing pucks coming at his brain in his sleep. And uh, if you're the Penguins, do you really want another reclamation project in net? Because that's how I think of Tristan Jari. I think of Jari as someone who would have to overcome first the playoff blow up from two, three years ago. And I feel, and I've said this many times, that he did that. And that's to his credit. But now he'd have to overcome whatever it was that was afflicting him physically slash mentally, maybe both, over this past season. He did lose a lot of people's respect and trust within the organization. He'd have to fight to get that back. They can say whatever they want to the contrary in public, but I I hear the other stuff, okay? And I know they aren't happy with him. So do you want to allow that to go out the door when Jari, in fact, has had the better goaltending metrics, meaning just performance-based, when he's on his game? I'm going to say this until it's proven wrong. I believe he's one of the top half dozen goaltenders in the NHL. When he's really, really on, I'm qualifying that. I don't think Hart's ever been that. I don't think Hart's ever even been that for a short spell. So, no, if you're if you're thinking of this from the standpoint that Hellebuck or Soros or whoever are going to be unaffordable out of the Penguins range, you might be right. You might be right. But if I'm Dubas and I've got $20 million to spend and half of that's on goaltending, then half of that's on goaltending. And I'm on the phone day and night with the Jets and the Predators, and anybody else who might fit that bill, although it's a pretty short list. And I'm being very serious in my conversations with them. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one of these on Monday. 